Hello, I'm James and I'm the admissions coordinator for Maths at Oxford. I coordinate the mathematics admissions test, which we sometimes call MAT. This year the test is being run with Pearson and you'll take the test in a Pearson test centre. But lots of things are staying the same. For example, we're using the same syllabus, the same list of mathematics that we use to write the questions. If you look at past paper questions, then they're written using the same sorts of mathematics. So how to prepare then for a tricky maths test where the questions look unfamiliar and you're not going to know straight away how to do them? Well, you could look at the past paper questions, of course. Um, there are quite a lot of them on our website. But perhaps before that, you might like to look at the syllabus, the list of topics, and you might like to look at some of the resources we've made to try to get people from the kind of questions you do at A-level or equivalent to these more complicated questions. You might also like to look at things that are nothing to do with math, um, other sources of questions out there, um, other ways you can find tricky mathematics. I always say that so long as you are stuck on the question, it's good preparation for the maths, because if you're stuck, then you're practicing the skill of getting unstuck, the skill of having ideas and making progress, even if you can't see through all of the steps for the rest of the question. Um, that's an important skill, not just on the test, but also in life as a, a mathematician uh, or on a maths degree. So here are some top tips for the mat. It's made up of multiple choice questions and two longer questions. Let's talk about multiple choice questions first. There are 25 of them, and for each question, you get the marks if you select the correct answer, and there's no penalty if you leave the question blank, and no penalty if you select an incorrect answer. That means that if you're not sure, you can choose the option that you think is most likely to be true, and if you're right, then you'll get the marks for that multiple choice question. They're each worth either two or three or four marks, and that's written on the question. For the longer questions, they've got separate parts, and there's usually a theme for the question or something that joins the question together. You don't have to attempt those separate parts all at, all at once or in the order that they're printed. You might like to read through them first, and you might like to come back to a part uh, once you've had an idea about uh, what's going on uh, with the question. Those longer questions will ask you to type a response to explain why something's true. Um, because being a mathematician is not just about getting the right answer, but also about explaining why that's the right answer. So on these two questions at the end, you'll be asked to explain or justify something, to uh, give a reason why your answer is correct, as well as showing us the correct answer. Those questions are marked by humans and there's partial credit awarded for partial solutions. So if you're making progress and explaining things, then you're probably getting marks along the way. I always say that the test is hard, but not impossible. The questions might look impossible when you first see them, but they're not impossible when you get going with them because you can do all of them just using this limited syllabus of mathematics. And finally, a note on access arrangements. If you have extra time in other tests, then you should also have extra time in this test. Please make sure that your test centre is aware when you register so that they can make accommodations for you. Overall, I wish you the best with your mathematical studies. Keep doing maths.